Hi there, this is Spitfire with Game Mode 5, and today we're going to be looking a little bit more in depth in how to use uh, FileZilla or any FTP client for that matter. Now, we did a previous video on how to set one up and, uh, and our first connection and what all that meant. Um, that link should be on the screen right now. All right, now, moving forward, there are some things that you will need to know. For instance, uh, this white window that you see here, this is actually where your join and session data is going to be. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, we will go over it. Here, this is, uh, as you can see, it says local site, and here you see that it points me currently to C users home downloads. Now, uh, we will set this up to be custom for us as we will want this to be somewhere that we can access very easily. Now, this window here uh, shows you what's in that folder that we discussed earlier. Down here, this will let you know. Down here, this will let you know uh, your progress as far as transferring files back and forth. Uh, this tab here will let you know if one of your transfers failed. And here, you'll see successful transfers. This window over here actually talks about the remote site, which we will populate now by simply joining our FTP site. There we go. In the prior video, we discussed uh, what these boxes here meant, the host, username, password, and port. Now. Uh, he, these are the files in our server. All right, you can navigate it by simply scrolling up and down. And to enter a folder, simply double click. To go to the prior folder, you would want to click the double dots right here. Now, you can also simply navigate using the remote site section up here. Simply click to gain access to that box and then scroll up and down to go to the folder that you would like. Now, there's some very exciting stuff here, but I don't expect you to see that quite yet. The very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, minimize this. Now, on our desktop, we're going to right click. We're going to go to New. We're going to go to Folder. Now, back all that text out and simply type in YouTube or you may want to actually name it whatever your server is called alright now we're going to bring FileZilla back up now how to navigate there that's the tricky part clicking on the box here as you see we're going to scroll up now you may see where it says desktop that's where we're gonna wanna go if you don't see that, don't worry, don't panic. I'll tell you how to get there the long way around. All right, simply go up to the very top. You're going to want to pick your Windows drive, which is usually the C drive. Okay, as you can see here, we have just a few drives on this computer. We've got A, C, and D. We are just worried about the C drive. We then select Users. Now, inside of users, you're going to want to select the user that you're logged in as, which in my case is home. Once you're in home, you can then scroll down to your desktop. Now, once you're here, we just created a folder called YouTube. So I'm going to click in this window and scroll down, and there it is. There we go. Now we're in that folder that we just saw right here on our desktop. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make an entire backup of everything in our server folder. We're going to go to this remote site section here. All right. Now, once our server is turned off for just a moment, just momentarily, the reason I tell you to turn your server off is that that way you get everything within that folder and it's all saved when that server is shut down. Again, this is just momentarily. 
try to do this at a time when your users are not on. For me, that happens to be the middle of the night. For you, that could be some other time. Now, we're going to select all of this. We're going to just click the very top one, not the double dots. Scroll down, hit Shift, and left click. That selects everything between those two points. Or you could do it a way that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. If you want, you can actually, if you want, you can actually simply highlight each individual one by hitting control and just picking and choosing the ones you'd like to move over to your local computer. For me, that seems to take quite a bit longer. Now, there are a few ways you can do this. You could simply left click and drag and drop over here. Or you can right click and go to download. And as you can see, it is populating over here on the left. Now, something that may actually help you while this is going, we're going to go up to settings is we can actually go down to transfers. We can set the maximum simultaneous transfers. It means how many transfers can be worked on at one point. I set this to 10 just in case while I'm downloading or uploading something, it encounters a larger file. Now, we're going to go ahead and click OK. There are some other things you can play around with up here, uh, but most of it's fairly standard, so we will not be going over that. Now, as you can see on our local machine, we now have more or less a copy of our server. Now, uh, to explain some of these, normally with Minecraft servers, you, the name of your world is going to be world. Um, and if you're running on a bucket or craft bucket server, you'll also see world underscore nether and world underscore the end. Vanilla Minecraft actually stores these all within one folder. However, bucket or slash craft bucket, depending on how you know it, stores them a little bit differently. Um, our world, the one that we're currently using on the YouTube server, uh, is actually uh, named two for a tutorial that we did earlier. So we still have those old files and the new files. If I were to want to delete the old world files, now that I've made a backup on my local machine, just in case, I can go ahead, come over here to the left, I can right click that folder and go to delete. Yes. And it will delete everything in that folder. Now, what we can do is we can do the same with world underscore nether and world underscore the end. Again, just simply hitting control and selecting both. All right. Now, there are some other very cool tips and tricks that we can go over here. For instance, when we go into plugins, we will see all of these jars that we've installed. Now, a jar is just a self-contained executable um, Java program, more or less, or at least a plugin or part of a program. And, and that's what these are here. Now, we still have this essentials.zip from when we installed essentials in a previous video. Now, the .zip is actually useless. Um, so we can get rid of that. Now, we can right click. Now, just for demonstration purposes, you can also rename. So for instance, if I wanted to rename it Bob, I could now do so, as you see. We will delete, yes. It is fairly easy to confuse what you're doing on your local machine over here and the server over here. There are a few ways that you can keep that from happening and everyone does it a little bit differently. But I do want to call attention to the point that it does not automatically synchronize between these two. That is something you will want to keep in mind. Now, let's go back to plugins. We're going to go to essentials. Now, these config.yml's 
normally normally they open up in notepad however I have mine set up to use notepad plus plus let me explain the difference here in essentials you can see that there are slightly different colors and line numbers and these all mean something now uh, with this particular program uh, green means a comment and anything that you are going to want to look at is probably going to be in blue or your values in orange this will this will help you maintain a sense of continuity and, and being able to decide what goes where and if you've made a mistake we've mentioned before on how to use config.yml's however I don't think I went over how very important it is to not break these alright so what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and exit out of this and I'd like to show you what that looks like if you open it in just notepad so we're gonna start up our uh, file browser here we're gonna to go to our desktop and then we are going to scroll down highlight YouTube we're going to go to our plugins folder back to essentials and into our config.yml however this time we're going to go to open with you may not have to do this especially if you don't have notepad plus plus installed we're going to search for now once it opens with notepad simply double click it and we will open it with notepad now as you can see there is a major difference here between what we had and what we have now this as it may seem to you seems a little bit hard to maintain hard to read and it definitely does not look as nice as before we may do another video on being able to set up notepad plus plus for proper configuration editing in the future but I definitely wanted to mention this as it's a good part of being a good server owner now we're going to go ahead and back out of this back out of this now there is something you may need to do on a regular basis now this is refreshing the server directory now all this does is it goes and asks the server what file should and should not be there this comes in handy from time to time especially when things are changing from the server and they're not directly in front of you in FileZilla or your FTP client. Simply right click and go to refresh. That's all you have to do. As you can see here we have a zipped copy of what we did in a previous tutorial. Now this is a copy of our server and you can just download these. You do not have to do it that way and it may be easier for you to simply maintain a copy on your machine and a copy on theirs. Now as you can see we've already along with the rest of it downloaded our backup right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to delete this. Alright last but definitely not least the top window here with our connection or session data uh, is very important now a lot of this may look <clears throat> fairly technical to you however this also is kept in a very easy to read manner using colors alright now here when we first joined the server what it did was it simply got a copy of everything that we had on the main server and let us see it here we then started transferring and as you can see it started transferring here file transfer successful transferred so many bytes in two seconds all right and it goes on about like this for every file now when you do contact support for your multi-craft server hosting uh, through envious host or whoever you're using um, data from this window could be very important should you need to share that with them all you have to do is right click and copy to clipboard 
and that should copy the entire thing to your clipboard. Let's go ahead and go down to Start, we'll go to Notepad. Now, right click and paste. We now have an entire copy of everything that happened in our session. This is of the most useful when asking for support or help from your hosting service. You need to have this data or they may not be able to properly help you. I'm going to click don't save for now but you may want to include that information in your emails should you contact them. I'm Spitfire with Game Mode 5. Like, subscribe, comments please.